Yes, welcome a tick, a tick, a tick. Back with another video for y'all, and this one is called How Did Serbia Win World War One? So we're gonna go in there and examine how that happened. You understand what I mean? Let's go ahead and YouTube and sip simmer. It was a sunny summer day in Sarajevo on June 28, 1914. The birds were chirping, people were going on about their business as usual, and the Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand decided to drive down the streets of the city with his dear wife, as to open up the new Imperial State Museum in their newly acquired territory of Bosnia from the Ottomans. While on the route through the enchanting ex-Ottoman city, several Serbian extremists attempted to assassinate them by throwing early 20th century homemade equivalents of pipe bombs at their convoy that only ended up injuring two of their guards. Upon visiting their loyal fallen soldiers in the hospital, the car carrying the royal family took a wrong turn on the street where a supreme gentleman was enjoying his morning coffee at a local cafe. Upon noticing the two, All hell Upon the killing of Austria-Hungary's heir to the throne, the Austrian government was outraged and immediately arrested the assassins that organized the attack on their statesmen. The government arrested 25 suspects. All were Austro-Hungarian citizens, except for three, one of them being Gavrilo Princip, who had shot Ferdinand. During the investigation, it was concluded that the assassins were supplied and funded by the secret Serbian military organization, the Black Hand, whose primary objective was unifying all South Slavic lands under Serbia. Due to Franz Ferdinand being a popular federalist, who aimed to incorporate the South Slavic lands into the Austro-Hungarian Empire as a third constituent monarchy, the Black Hand saw him as an enormous threat to their aspirations, and thus decided to eliminate him off of the political chessboard in an attempt to further their interests and release Bosnia from the grasps of a foreign empire. The Austrian government intended to find... You know, you know what's crazy when you really think about it? How certain events in history or even in modern time could catapult things into chaos or it could cause a people who are oppressed to rise up you know what i'm saying like on my island uh, there was a demonstration and the 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 leader of the revolution's father got murdered well uh, he got shot during that demonstration and that was like a catalyst to start the whole revolution. I mean, not that the revolutionary idea wasn't there already. It just, you know, sped it up. And, you know, when you look at certain events that happened in history, like 9-11, you know, that changed the whole culture of the country. It did. Comment down below, or wherever you are, something in your lifetime that you have witnessed that's changed the way your country is. For some of us in our lifetime, there's more than one. You know what I mean? Because there was a, when I was in my teenager, 70s, there was riots, things changed. <laughs> then there was a revolution in, in 79, things changed. Then there was a coup d'etat in 83, everything turned on now. And then there was an invasion in 83. You know what I'm saying? So for us in these times, and it's because of mass uh, communication too, the events that cause changes in our lives seem to happen frequently because not only can we see what's going on with us personally, we can see what's going on all around the world. And that, that happened there. That was a catalyst for something. I think it was the catalyst that was used as the Catholic catalyst. So there's a slight difference there to propel things for the Let's keep going. And links between the assassins and the Serbian government within the Kingdom of Serbia as to have a casus belly on invading the neighboring kingdom and seizing their lands. However, the investigation concluded that there was no substantiating evidence to support this claim. 
as evidence determined that the Serbian government was aware of the group's existence, however, it had no ties to the Black Hand whatsoever. Yet, this wasn't enough to appease the Austrian government. Still, driven with a desire to annex the South Slavic Kingdom, the Austrian government started to prepare for war and consolidated ties with their allies in preparation. As a way of obtaining a justifiable war cause, Austria and Hungary delivered Serbia a 10-point ultimatum, which they knew the kingdom could never accept. Serbia, to the surprise of many, accepted all points except number 6, and even offered a compromising solution to the point, where instead of either of the two countries trying to investigate the incident, have instead the trial and investigation take place in The Hague, and be done by the superpowers of the world, all countries within Europe and even Germany thought that Serbia's answer was adequate. However, Austria had no intent on accepting it, and thus on July 28, 1914, the day Austria rejected Serbia's answer, Europe was plunged into chaos. The war began with an Austro-Hungarian shelling campaign against Belgrade. Austrian ships sailed down the Danube and started shelling the mighty Belgrade fortress standing on top of the city as rifle fire roared across the Sava River. For the next week, bullets were flying across the river that divided Austria-Hungary and Serbia as TNT blasts demolished the bridges that had previously connected the two. On the 12th of August, the Austrians finally decided to invade as the 2nd Austro-Hungarian army imposed pressure along the Sava River. The 5th Army commenced a penetrative attack crossing the river Drina into the western part of Serbia. Seeing this, the Serbian army had to adjust their plan of defending the country and rearrange their troops' positions and sent out their 2nd Army, which was their main force to attack the enemy's attacking army's left flank. Thus, on 15th of August, the 2nd Serbian Army traveled westwards and occupied a defensive position on the mountain of Tser near the village of Tekerish, as they were expecting the Austrian army to attack from there. The next day, the two armies commenced in a bloody battle that would define the war. Artillery roaring, soldiers shouting, rifles shooting, planes flying overhead. It was a mess. However, after nine days of hard battle, the Serbian army was able to successfully repel the invading Austro-Hungarian army with a decisive defeat, as the 5th Austrian army suffered around 40,000 casualties Meanwhile, Serbia suffered only 18,000. But there was no time to celebrate. World War I was in full blaze and the Central Powers were making great advances in the Eastern and Western fronts. Serbia might have won the battle, but it hadn't won the war. Thus, Serbia went on the offensive and decided to invade the Hungarian provinces of Srem across the Sava River. Unexpected to many, the underdog of the Great War was able to occupy a decent chunk of the province and reinforce their defensive positions. Still, the Imperial Army wasn't just going to sit and do nothing about that. They were determined to conquer the Slavic Kingdom, and by God, they were going to do it. Thus, on September the 8th, the Austro-Hungarian Army launched a second offensive into Serbia, once more across the Drina and Sava rivers. Because of this, the Serbian Army was forced to abandon its positions in Srem as it rushed to reinforce its western front. Again, unanticipated by the Austrians, the Serbians were able to repel their advances, thus the front evolved into trench warfare. During this time period, warfare were similar to the ongoing one in France and Belgium. But during this time period, many fiddlers were sent to raise morale of the army within the trenches. Often enough, they would start playing their fiddles during a battle, and as they'd sing louder and louder, fire on both sides would gradually go down until both sides would stop shooting at each other and listen to the musical performance. Upon the fiddler ending his piece, he'd pick up a gun, shoot it at the enemy and the battle would continue. Yeehaw! With the second offensive devolving into stagnation, the Austro-Hungarian army prepared for a third offensive. Over the months of trench warfare, the empire decided to replenish its resources and rest up its army. Thus, on November 6th, the imperial army was on the attack again. A barrage of artillery shells started hitting Serbian positions in much greater numbers than they had experienced before. This proved to be extremely difficult for the Serbian army to handle as their resources were slowly depleting and they didn't have the means to return fire. Thus, finally, after five months of trying to invade a country, the Austro-Hungarian Empire penetrated Drina and took over major territories in western Serbia alongside the cities of Valjevo and Lajkovac. Overwhelmed with the superior firepower of the Austrians and lack of ammunition and shells on their side, the Serbian army was forced to retreat from Belgrade. 
Therefore, in December the 3rd, Belgrade finally fell under the grasp of Austria-Hungary. But Serbia wasn't out of the fight yet. The same day Belgrade fell into the hands of the Imperial Army, the first Serbian army was preparing for a counter-attack. Allied supplies had finally reached Serbia from Greece, and it was time to use them. The Serbian army positioned themselves on the right side of the Kolubara River, near the town of Gornji Milanovac, where they fortified their positions. The Austrians thinking they have the Serbs pushed. But that is crazy, you know what I mean? I think that was kind of the beginning of a, a world war. Right there. Started. Crazy. Everybody coming and want that piece of the pie. Crazy. ...into a corner, unable to defend himself from the might of the Imperial Wehrmacht, didn't expect the Serbs to unleash a barrage of artillery and engage the army with full force, piercing through the Austro-Hungarian front, which would then devolve into chaos as its army waveringly collapsed with a staggering counter-offensive. Within two days the battle would be over as the Serbian army devastated the Imperial army, capturing over 323 officers and over 42,000 non-commissioned officers and even more ammunition and equipment. On the 15th of December the Serbian army would go on to liberate Belgrade, only two days after the Austrians held a military parade within the city prematurely celebrating Serbia's capitulation. Although Serbia once more was successful in preventing the Austrian advances, the war was just starting for the small Balkan country. Over the next year, the Austrian forces would replenish and ask for help from their ally Germany, as well as start planning to incorporate Bulgaria into their alliance. Finally, the fourth offensive began on October 16, 1915, as the Austro-Hungarian and German forces focused all their strength in a ferocious push on Belgrade. Serbian forces threw themselves at the enemy, trying to stop the Central Powers' advance at... Man, to get all those, uh, yeah, I guess you call it the Central Forces there, it took some serious politicking, or as we call it, politicking, to, to get all these people to come. I wonder, I'm gonna have to dig into it more to see. I wonder what kind of uh, discussions they had, what was promised. Was it territory? I don't know. That, that's more like it there. You know, territory to bring Germany in and stuff like that. But imagine all those people, and I always say that all those people living, knowing there's a pending war coming. When it happened back home, I didn't know it was happening. I woke up to it. I didn't have time to because there was, I mean, we were fighting amongst ourselves a little bit, but for an outside person to come in and do it, we were out. That was, that was far from my mind. Even though we heard rumblings or it and stuff, I was like, hey, come on now, you know. You know that's not going to happen. And it happened. Didn't have time to prepare, you know. It's just writing the fear. It's crazy. At any cost, despite their bravery and battle fervor, the United Forces of Austria, Hungary and Germany were too much to handle and Belgrade fell under enemy hands. At the same time as the Serbian army was struggling to repel the invasion to its north, Bulgaria invaded Serbia on its eastern side and in a weakened state pushed all the way to Skopje, cutting off Serbia's connection to Greece and the rest of the Allies. As the progression of the invasion continued, more and more of Serbia fell under enemy occupation as Bulgaria continued to push and occupy the entirety of eastern and southern Serbia and Austria-Hungary taking over the entirety of western Serbia. On November the 25th, the Supreme Serbian Command decided that the army had no other option but to retreat south through Albania and reorganize and join the Allied forces in the Greek island of Corfu. Thus began the event known in Serbian history as the Albanian Golgotha where over 150,000 soldiers marched through the mountains in Albania accompanied alongside their king and regent, as the central power forces were right on their trail chasing them down. Alongside the military, many Serbian civilians and academics joined their ranks as a sign of patriotism, marching by their side through the winter. Wow. Over the upcoming months, over 70,000 Serbians died on the march due to hunger and overexhaustion. After a month of marching through hostile terrain, the Serbian army finally reached the coast of Albania, where the Allied Navy transported the soldiers to Corfu. 
The exhausted, starving and sick soldiers finally reached the island. But although they were safe at last, many were severely ill and in the first days of them reaching Corfu, it is estimated around 120 Serbian soldiers died per day, because of which many named Corfu the island of death. However, the soldiers soon enough regained their strength, upon which throughout May and April of 1916, they started to be transported to Thessaloniki, where they joined the main allied forces. Together, they commenced a counterattack on Bulgaria and started regaining territory from the Bulgarian occupiers. Throughout 1917, the front didn't change much. The real changes in the war situation came in 1918, after the US joined the war. As the Western Front started making gains, the Thessaloniki Front was successful in breaking through Bulgarian defenses, upon which the Serbian army continued to march north and liberate the occupied provinces of Macedonia. Finally, Bulgaria signed a peace treaty on September 29th. Throughout the month of October, the Serbian army continued to press north and engage German soldiers who occupied major cities, kicking them out of the country and pressing even into the territories of Austria-Hungary. Finally, the war was put to an end for Serbia on November 13, 1918, as the country signed the final peace treaty with Hungary. After the war, Serbia would go on to exchange territories with its neighboring countries, most notably Hungary and Romania, as well as form the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, which would later on be renamed to the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Over the four year period, it is estimated that Serbia lost almost one third of its population and 62% of its male population. Over the upcoming years, the Kingdom was tasked with undergoing massive restoration efforts as so much of its industry and infrastructure were destroyed during the conflict. And yeah, that would be the story of Serbia during World War One. Wow. That's crazy. But isn't it funny how like a lot of uh, countries that were allies during the first and the second world war are now kind of uh, enemies to a certain degree? You know what I mean? Because uh, the Russians helped the Americans defeat Hitler. And then they become they became enemies. I guess they weren't allies to begin with, you know what I'm saying? Because when one have a big country and the other have a, another big country, you see, they're going to fight for uh, supremacy. It's all that masculine stuff going on, you know what I mean? No, I say that, not that women don't do it too, they get in power. But uh, this was quite interesting. So, so Serbia was there from the beginning of the war to the end of the war. No wonder 62% of the men died during that war. They, they seem to have been in the fight the longest. I hope you guys learned something uh, as I did here about this, you know what I mean? Didn't know Serbia was part of this whole thing. There. And, well, I knew, but to what extent I didn't know. Because, it, like I say, it keeps saying, those small countries there in that region, they don't know what's happening or what happened to them and what's happening to them unless you dig into it. Same thing like the Caribbean. You know, people just think, oh, party, you know, sunshine, until you dig into the political and the cultural vibe of that place. But uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video so you can go check it out. I'll also leave links. The other videos that have reacted to on Serbia, so we'll check them out. Yes, I uh, understand. And thank you all for all the comments and uh, all the suggestions because this one was a suggestion too. Y'all take care of each other, all right? Cool, right?